Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Here to piggyback on that last video. Listen, this is some more of your warning. Things that you think are harmless, anything that deals with the occult, witchcraft, white magic, black magic, playing with demonic things, it's, it's very dangerous. It can be deadly. Now listen, uh, have you ever thought of buying a grenade and putting it in a baby's hands and pulling the pin and letting the baby play with it? That's pretty much what you're doing when you play with the dark side. Warming yourself by the devil's fire, playing with demonic toys and games, some of the TV games you allow your children to play with, some that you play with, are so demonic. You look at the creatures, they look like things that come straight from hell itself. The, the, the magic that they use, the potions and everything that they're promoting. Some of your, the things you allow your children to watch just entice them that much more. You know, there was a, a program I remembered years ago I was so surprised that they allowed that on TV. But because anything goes in this world nowadays, in the last days, anything goes. I'm not surprised now when I think back on it. But I was surprised then. Because I, it, was, it shocked me to see how many people were going for the okie doke. It, this man was on a show playing a medium. And what he was doing was anyone who had a loved one who had passed away, if they wanted to communicate with the dead, which the Bible tells us not to even attempt to do, this man would be the medium. And he would tell them things like, oh, I, I'm picking up, uh, uh, did you have a grandmother? Was her name so-and-so? Well, she wanted me to tell you, go back to school. Yes, do this, do that. Oh, that's a good one to marry. Whatever the case was. And they would have so much truth wrapped up in it that people would be just really taken aback and moved in their heart by having communicated with the dead, with their loved ones. They weren't communicating with the dead. There are things called, demons called, familiar spirits. And these spirits on the dark side have been your life's companion. Now, you know how God has angels. And we call some of those angels our guardian angels. Well, those guardian angels know us left and right. And they're good at, at, at helping protect and all of that. Because they instinctively know how we're going to handle some things. Well, listen. Excuse me. There are demons called familiar spirits. They're not guardian angels, trust me. They are familiar spirits. They know where our buttons are. They know how to get us riled up. They know what scares us. They know what paralyzes us. They know what kind of people we're attracted to, the things we like, people we like, the things that, that pull on our heartstrings. They know what our insecurities are. Now, it's not that they're psychic. We verbalized it. We have responded in certain ways. Yeah, yeah, they know what's up, but we don't. So when they have walked with you all these years, they know who your grandmother is. They know what her name is. They know what your grandfather looks like. They know what your child that passed away looks like. I mean, they know these things because they have been with you from the very beginning of your life. Because they were assigned to tear your life down. You don't know this. So you innocently believe, ooh, I'm talking to my loved one. No, you're talking with a demon. And the demon is talking through the person you're consulting with. So again, what you have done inadvertently was open.
opened the door and invited them in. And when you invite them in, curses accompany the visit. Sicknesses accompany the visit. Confusion, chaos, all kind of mess starts breaking out. Attitudes, anger, and people that didn't act that aggressive before. Your animals can turn on you and, and, and you know, like the other woman said, he bit the man in the face. Well, the door was open. She predicted it, and the demon jumped in the door and said, all righty now. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Watch this. Well, that's what they do. There are demons that jump into animals, you guys. And for those of you who have pets, you have given an open invitation for demons to trip your animals out. And then you wonder why your animal is coming at you with a growl when all you're trying to do is feed them or play with them. Where did that come from? Demons. Yeah, you keep on playing. You're going to have a whole lot to be praying about. Let's minimize that list. Because life happens, but it doesn't have to be ruled and manipulated by demonic entities. If we are just smart enough to keep those doors locked, shut, tight. Oh, let me share this real quick. I had a dream one time. I'm trying to make this quick because I know my videos can be long. But I had a dream one time. This just popped in my head, so I believe I'm supposed to share it. And in this dream, it was very dark. It was very misty. It was, it was spooky and eerie feeling. And my house was dark, and the street was dark, and everything was dark. And I heard uh, a knock on my door. Okay. And I was like, ooh, who's that? And I heard a voice quietly say, don't open the door. I say to you, don't open the door. But me, with my hard head itself, like some of you, well, I was nosy. And I presumptuously opened that door, presuming that because I had Jesus on my side, nothing could hurt me. You hear me? But there are times when God gives you a warning. That means it can hurt you if you allow it. And you're not to give it any foothold, any whatsoever. Well, I gave it a foothold because dum diddy dum dum opened the door saying to myself, well, it can't hurt me because I got Jesus. Yeah. When I opened the door, guess what was on the other side? It was all foggy outside, dark, very dark night. It was a female figure with a burlap face, no features, and strings like, like yarn for hair. And it had a black suit, black blazer. And it reached and grabbed my hand. And it grabbed, it grabbed both my arms. You know, I couldn't cut loose. I could not break loose from that thing until I hollered, let go of me. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Poof, I woke right up. Now, I say that to tell you, God knows when there's pending danger. And if he says don't, baby, you better not. Who knows what I could have opened the door to? Thank God for the name of Jesus. Thank God for a mind, the presence of mind, to use the name of Jesus to get rid of that thing. But I wouldn't have had to go through that had I simply obeyed in the first place. Trust and obey. There's no better way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey.